Hey friends, this is Daniel Nesbitt, and you're watching episode three of Designing a Sans Serif Typeface in Glyphs. In the last episode, things got a little bit heavier here for our typeface, and I went through and I decided ultimately that I wanted to start building out some of these heavier weights for it. So as you see me toggling there, we basically just beefed up the four letters that we've been working with. Now I do appreciate your patience because that was a lot of work for four letters. And while it may seem like a lot of work, it does go by a little bit faster now because now that we have that foundation, we can start getting into other letters. And if there's anything I love about type design, it's how this process goes down. So we're gonna see how far we get today. I genuinely have no idea how much I will progress, but I do, I'd do. i like to try and at least get a few letters out here. Maybe we can start making some words and, and go from there. I'm going to jump in and I'm going to do my first favorite letter to, to move on. And that's the lowercase h. If I'm really gonna go all nerd on you here, the reason that I like doing this is for no other reason than I once watched a video where I think it might have been Doyle Young, potentially. And he was talking about his process, and he was he was showing off, I think it was an actual H and an N. And I was just enamored by that because this I mean this is many years ago when I was not really that passionate about type. And of course everybody knows these are these are kind of the same shapes. But I was so blown away by it for like no good reason. <laughs> I was like, oh my God, you can do that. And and so I don't know. It's just I do you want to call it a tradition a tradition? Maybe, I don't know. But there you go. We have an H. <laughs> All that for just an H. Thank you for sticking with me on that. Another good letter and another one that I like doing is the lowercase i. Uh, there's a couple reasons that I like doing this, but mainly we get to start introducing some additional elements in, in now because up to this point, which I know was one letter, but we just were uh, extending one stem, but now we get to introduce the tittle. Yes, that's a technical term, and don't ask me why or how. I'm sure there's, well, at least I hope there's a good story for it. <laughs> And if there is, I don't know it, but that's what it's called. I'm just relaying facts here. So what I'm gonna do is just size this to the width of my stem. And I'm just using my number pad here just to keep things nice and even. And I'm just gonna bump it up to about uh, maybe a little bit more. Now, similar to the O in its relation to the X height, we do have to have a little bit of an overshoot with this, because if we don't, as you can probably see right now, and whoops, I will give us a few to look at while I'm adjusting on this here. Uh, if we do this, I mean, this is the same situation where this looks smaller than that, even though technically speaking, that's 85, and I just got done typing it in, but that's 85. So we need to bump that up a little bit. I think what I'm going to do, we're gonna go 10 in each direction and just see where that that lands. Now, a couple of things that I'm looking at here, I'm obviously looking at this close up here, but again, like before, I'm keeping my, my smaller version of this down at the bottom here. And while it looks okay at this, this larger size, I'm really not feeling it yet at that lower size. So I'm gonna bump this up just a tad more and it might actually be quite a bit more even. So this starts to look a little bit better. Now the problem though is, and this is kind of where this back and forth comes in, is now it looks really ridiculous at this higher size. So I'm gonna bump it back by about 10 points here. So we're landing on 110. And I'm gonna move that up just a little bit more. And we're gonna write our first word, which is high, which I know is really, really amazing. <laughs> So that doesn't look too terrible. I'm probably gonna push this up just a tad bit more. Make sure I don't take everything with that. So that doesn't look too bad. And as you can see there, I'm, I'm opting for the circle instead of the square point for this. This will factor in as well into uh, punctuation with uh, semicolons, colons, periods, all that kind of stuff. 
I do like the idea of having that lowercase i with the round. It just, for me, it's just kind of that human element to it. I believe typefaces like Helvetica, they've they've already kind of got a stronghold on the uh, on the square tittle, which is fine. There's nothing wrong with it. It's just not really what I'm feeling for this one uh, because I don't feel like this one really needs one. Um, so one other thing that I want to do here is I actually do want to incorporate a small change into this. Rather than just having the eye come down, I wouldn't mind having just a little bit of a, a spur at the end of this. One of the reasons that I like doing this is, is I find that when I get kind of deep in the weeds on, on typefaces like this is, it, especially like smaller sizes or, or things of that nature, I really don't want this to feel like my lowercase i, uh, L, 1, those kinds of things. I don't want them to feel like they're basically just the same thing repeating over and over again. I do like to have a little bit of variety to this. And to me, this just it helps with readability, if, if I'm being completely honest. I... I just think it, it just looks better, for lack of a better word. Like, I know I'm not being very technical here, but but it just it really helps. And it, it's these little things, these little decisions that you're constantly making that, that ultimately do add up. Um, and I think, I think this is just going to work a little bit better for what I'm seeing and envisioning. And one other thing that I'm going to run into here, which you're probably already seeing, is... Uh, I, I've kind of got this this pointy end to it, and the one thing when you're designing type is you really you don't want a pointy end. <laughs> I'm making one anyway because I don't plan on using that whole whole portion there. I do want to cut this off at some point. I just have to determine what that point is going to be. So I, ultimately, it, it's going to be some angle or or something like that. You kind of see where this starts to go. And one thing that I'm doing is I'm just making sure that I'm kind of keeping a uniform curve between these two things. And then eventually, maybe even now, uh, I will come back and cut that off. And I'm going to go in an increment of 15 here. So effectively, that's a 45 degree angle. And we're just going to see... You know, this may be a terrible idea for all. Oops, this may be a terrible idea for all I know. We're gonna find out, and of course, I can never, never quite get these things to work. Let's try one more. Nah, I'm not gonna get it. If anybody has a, a tip or a trick to this one, maybe it's the need to correct path direction. Is that it? No. I um. It's not. Oops. It's not the tittle, was it? No, it's not that either. Apparently, it's just going to be goofy to me. It's not a compatibility issue either, is it? Hmm. Let's try reverse contours and see if that solves my problem. Nope, that isn't either. Okay, so we're just going to have to assume that this is not going to play. Actually, one more thing. As you may notice, I do get pretty persistent. <laughs> uh, let's see. Maybe that was the solution. Yeah, you know what? We got there. <laughs> All right, so I'll put this back on. And, you know, the funny part now that I see that is I actually, for all that trouble, <laughs> don't like how that turned out. Oh, the joy. The joy of type. I, I hope I'm not dissuading anybody from from designing typefaces. I don't, I don't think I am. So one thing I'm going to do here is I need to really work on that curve. Now, the thing is, is when I'm designing this kind of stuff, I do want to keep my handles pretty even here in, in 90 degree increments. I don't like deviating too far from that. But from time to time, I do need to make an exception. And this just may be one of those exceptions. So I think that that tapers off a little well. It does feel thick, as you probably noticed. I'm still not even sure that I really want this to work. It, it just might not be here. Uh, let's try this. Maybe I'll give this one more kick at the can here and see. 
where I get. So for you, do 85 wide, push you all the way down to the bottom, and then just get everybody centered up here, which I think. We should be centered actually. Let's do this just to make sure. There we go. And then push just my eye down below here. And let's see, that was 80 points of width, so we'll give it the same, even though I may not end with that. So let's take a look here. Because I have seen a couple ways of doing this, and, and the one way that I really don't mind is, is having the L, or, or sorry, the, the lowercase i curve up a little bit. Maybe that's not the direction we go. Maybe we go more like this. And, and eventually here, I'm just going to create a, a curve around that, make sure I'm on the baseline there. Let's see. So I think I'm always going back to remember my numbers here. If you're If you're ever wondering that. <laughs> I I feel like I get I get in the zone with this stuff and then I actually my brain just goes hey why are you trying to remember all these things so what I'm working on here is just I'm finding a good amount of distance that I I kind of want this to to curve out and I think I found it with that let's just roll with that and see where that lands us so good there. So, I believe, make sure my, uh, my curve tool works here. Oh, I'm having a moment today. Or I may just end up doing this by myself. <laughs> oh, do you ever just have one of those days where it's like, you just, you can't get technology to work. But let's try this. Let's. I'm just gonna do it this way. I know this is the wrong way of doing it. This is the point where I make all those hardcore glyphs fans maybe cry a little bit. And if you're one of those people out there, I apologize. But sometimes you just gotta roll with the punches, and today is one of those roll with the punches day for me. <laughs> All right, so we'll, uh, we'll add a point there, and then I will move you up to there, make sure we're on the same point. And really all I'm going to do here, I'm kind of cheating a little bit, I know, but uh, I'm just going to move my points into the same spot as this circle that I drew out, and there we go. So that gives us the curve there. Uh, we're going to come back in a moment because, as you are probably thinking, maybe even yelling out loud, that uh, we we don't want it to be too uh, mechanical with our curve. Uh, so yes, I'm aware of that. But uh, we're just we're gonna get these kind of tidied up here. So that point there, and that point there, and then get our curve handles in. Get those to snap to our circle, and there we go. So yeah, what I'm looking at here is is it definitely you can tell that my outer curve feels a little bit on the thin side and it's kind of creating this goofy little look to it. Of course we don't want that, so I'm going to bump these up a bit more. And just see where we land here. So that's a little bit better, maybe. <laughs> Again, this is subjectivity at its Finest. Let's see if I kind of line my points up. Maybe this will actually help us out a little bit. So I'm going to line that point to there. I'm going to line that point to there. Of course, my curve is going to look a little bit goofy. I'm kind of hoping that this is maybe, maybe not. I think you might have to go in a little bit. Because what I'm looking for here is is this taper is obviously going to start pretty thick up here, but eventually it's going to it's going to thin out as we go to this point. So we're going from uh, about 
85, that should be about 85, and for some reason it's not 85. Am I off somewhere here? I think I might have been. There we go, that looks better. So we're going from 85 here, and then we're tapering down to 70 there, which means I've got to get a little bit of a difference. So you see, as I kind of, we go from 85, it does go up to 86 a little bit, so I need to deal with that, and then eventually we go down to 70. So to fix this here, I'll back that off just a tad. Does that help me out a little bit? So 85, yep, there we go. So now it's just kind of a nice, gentle taper down. It does look a little bit goofy still, and I think at this point it might have more to do with this portion of my curve. Let me just need to come in and make that a little bit smaller. And the other thing that I need to do as well, or kind of keep in mind, is that I want to keep these two curves, or these, these two points, fairly even. Again, we don't want that goofiness. We don't want that goofiness to come in. So the other thing that I'm seeing too is we could have probably actually bring that back in a little bit. I don't know that I want it to go too far. Because if I put this in a word, and that's really not even a word, but we're going to roll with it. So this is looking a little bit janky still. And, and this just might be one of those deals where I've got to play around with this a little bit. I feel like I do have a good idea with this, and I at least want to keep this here um maybe that's what it needs actually i'm so used to hitting the v key by the way i if you shout out to anybody who kind of gets used to some of this stuff but it's it's been a, a habit that's been ingrained in my brain in photoshop for so long to hit the v key to get out of something that uh but now i i find myself doing this in every program um, <laughs> but that's a little bit better um Probably still not 100% perfect, and I may go back and revisit this a little bit. But but the reason that I'm also doing this too is because I do want to jump into the L at some point. So whoops, let's just type in the word hill. And of course, you probably saw where that was going. <laughs> there we go. It was 80 and 60. Okay. So again. I, I like having that that little spur there just to denote that that's what it is. Of course, the the uh, I L L. <clears throat> this is kind of a good way to see how this just repeats itself, and 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 um, you know it, it kind of gives you that that feel of, of how things are going to go here. Um, I know it's not hello technically, but I'm just trying to get a feel for how this is going to look or if this is going to work. So as I said, I think there's something here, and I don't mind keeping that for now. But I definitely don't just want these to be straight lines either. I, I think I think there can be a little bit of fluff to it. Now eventually, if I do find something like, I would be open to including this uh, these tails on things like the H, the B, the D, P, Q, all them. I don't know if that's a decision that I'm fully on border of that I've made yet. Actually, you know, actually, since I'm talking about it, <clears throat> we might as well give it a shot, right? This could totally be just the world's most awfulest idea ever, but this is one of those things you don't know till you, till you try it, right? And, and that's one thing that I, I always kind of encourage myself to do is, is, is try some of these things out because sometimes, sometimes they do work. I think in this case, this is not one of those times, though. That does feel like it's it's hanging out a little bit more than I want it to. So it was worth a shot. I'll say that. But I think we're going to stick. We're going to stick with what we know there. That that seems to feel a little bit better to me. I know there are typefaces like Museo that that can pull that off fairly well. There's probably others too. I just don't know that this one's going to be it. At least for the style that I'm going for here. So we're going to jump back now. We've got a few letters. Um, 
what else do we want to jump into? Now, one thing, it, it could be easy to jump in and maybe try uh, some more rounder ones. I do have the U, which, as you guessed, is probably going to be pretty easy. Now, the one thing about the U, actually, that was kind of fun to watch, wasn't it? <laughs> the one thing about a U is as much as it is just doing what I just did where I'm flipping it around, you also notice it looks a little bit funky as well <clears throat> because uh, the U is a little bit of a funky letter if you're just going to do that. It, this is a, a bit more than flipping around a lowercase n. It's a good place to start. But as I recall, you'll find that most type designers prefer to to kind of adjust the structure of this a tiny bit. And I'm going to be one of those people today. Because um, the thing is, is you have to think about how you, you write the U versus the N. And in this case, it's, well, here, I'll go back to, I'll go back to the lowercase N so we can kind of go through this together. So if you think about the way you write an N, you, you get that downstroke and then you come up and you're kind of, just fluffing off to to do the the second vertical stroke here, and and that's how you kind of get that nice curve or that nice uh, arch to it. Versus the U, uh, what you'll find, at least as, as far as as I write, I find I do this is that the people tend to kind of go down a little bit harder, and they kind of make this this curve a little bit shorter, and then it tapers up a little bit more, which I I could be okay keeping that there. And then we, we come down for that second stroke there. So as much as this is, you know, being mechanical and making this, this look, uh, you know, smooth and everything, I also want to take into account that that's probably how most people write you. And, and ultimately, that's what's going to look natural to people. Even though we're viewing this stuff as a typeface and as this, this thing that's being designed, it's amazing how much type design still relies on how we write our letters out. Um, there's just, there's a lot to kind of keep in mind. And honestly, it was one of those things when I first designing, or when I first started designing type, I really thought this was just about making mechanical adjustments and doing that kind of thing. But what I quickly found out is, is just how much writing influences type. And we don't even realize that you've got stroke order, you've got just different ways or different uh, approaches that the people have for doing these things. Uh, and one thing that I was working on the whole time and not realizing is that my my uh, anchor point there got a little off balance, which probably explains why I had that bump there that I was just about to point out to everybody. But it seems that fixing that has made it go away. So we'll do a couple shapes there so I can kind of see what I'm doing off to the side. And again, this, this is one of those things, uh, trying to figure out weight, it's, it's, it's fun. <laughs> I'll just say that. But I think we're getting somewhere there. So it's going to look a little bit different. I mean, it does look like the same letter. It's, what I'm after here is that it looks like I, I just took the N and turned it upside down. But already we know that this is slightly thinner. And I just need to do some work on some of these curves here. Now, just to show you the opposite way, just so you can see this, uh, I'll move this up here a little bit. You do see that it is a little bit narrower. Um, I could even go down this way. You can see that it's a little bit narrower there. It's just a few points off. It's not even that much. And if I were to flip this upside down the other way, you'll notice that it's it's not quite the same either. It's a little bit narrower. This this curve is a little bit tighter here compared to this one. So it's all about those nuances of, of making sure that uh, this looks right, even though it's it seems like it was just as easy as, as uh, flipping a, a, a letter around. So now if I go back, just kind of seeing how this goes a little bit, that, that seems to be okay. Just making sure my spacing's looking good. I think we could be okay with that for now. It doesn't look terrible. Again, there's there's a bit of work to go with this stuff, but I think I think that's that's good for now. Uh, moving on, I'm going to jump into the M here. Once I have the M double clicked, 
I'm going to give myself a few M's to work with. And then for this, I'm actually going to go and just give myself some extra space to work with. Now for the N, or for the M, excuse me. Again, this we're kind of getting into some basic stuff here. Um, I'm just going through and just kind of feeling out for a shape. I obviously I don't know that I'm going to go this wide for the end. That is that is quite a bit. Uh, I may end up dialing this back in a little bit, but but as you can see now, we're kind of getting into this this component based build of this now, where I can start reusing elements. And to me, this is where type design really begins to shine. Because what you begin to realize very, very quickly as you, you start getting more comfortable designing letters is how much stuff you can actually reuse. And, and even so, it's a good idea to reuse a, a lot of these elements. It's, it's what gives you that consistency and, and makes it feel like it's a cohesive typeface. There are nuances. Uh, you probably just noticed on this second curve here that I actually thickened that up a little bit. And the reason that I'm doing that is we don't have the vertical stroke up here to contend with. This actually does, it, it tapers away towards that other arch there. And because of that, I can actually get by with a little bit more weight there. And so again, if I just zoom out a little bit, you can see there, it looks fairly uniform in weight. Um, again, this is probably just something that you know I'm going to come back and I'm going to tweak this a bit more uh, this isn't by any means final or anything like that but I think I think this will work so I'm actually going to narrow up my M a little bit as well I really don't think it needs to be super, super wide. Uh, now, yes, I know that that they they are a little bit wider. We're we're dealing with variable width characters here, uh, but there's a rhyme or a reason or something. I don't know how you want to word it where you don't want that to look like it's super, super wide. It can throw off the rhythm of the typeface a little bit. So that's looking pretty good there. Let's see here. I think I'm going to jump into one more here. And what do we want to do? Hmm. You know, let's go a little bit of a different direction. So my vertical strokes so far have been curves, but one letter that doesn't have that is the lowercase z. And let, let's play with this a little bit because the Z is also going to get me uh, some more information here. In this case, this is going to get me uh, an idea of what I want my diagonals to be. So if we jump back in here, we were at 80 and 70, I think was the other, or sorry, 85 and 70. <laughs> Correct. Um, so I'm just going to grab this element here. We're going to rotate it. And I'm going to bump this one down to 70. Now the thing with a Z that I, I have never really gotten a good feel or grasp on is the width of a Z. I don't know what it is. I tend to struggle with it. It's one of the, it just, I guess it happens. <laughs> um, often I, I found when I'm starting stuff like this out is that I, I tend to make it too wide. So my goal here is to not make it look wide, and let's let's see how much I succeed at that. I also do have a trick here where I'm going to go in and I'm going to create a circle that is 85 points wide. Now again, similar to curved shapes, our, our diagonal piece here is going to look a little bit wonky, and that's okay. But my goal here is to make it look as if it is, is, is wide or has the same width as everything else. So immediately what you'll notice, I, I literally just uh, sheared this, I guess would be the effective way to put it, and you'll notice right off the bat that I'm at 57 points instead of uh, where I want to be with the 85. So what I've got to do I've got to come back here and this is why I like using a circle because 
in any direction you go, you're going to hit that edge there and at least make it look close. So what I'm looking at here, you can kind of get this. I'm actually going to move these out of the way for the moment just so I can get a more accurate measurement. But it looks like I'm about 105 there and 140 there. Now the trick is I've got to try and keep these two these two things straight. So if I split the difference and I'm doing 120, maybe 130, let's see, that was 130. And up here we're at 115. It's just a little bit of a balancing act and making sure that, that these two ultimately get to the same weight somehow. So now we're at 124 and 120. So 125, 125, there we go. So if I look at those two and then I look at where I'm at here, that looks to be about right. Now the thing that I just realized I did was I made that a little bit wider so you can see him sticking out here a little bit. And we really don't want that, do we? So I am going to see how this gets me. Now that does make it a little bit, I, I just did a shear here of five degrees and that does make it a little bit wider than the circle. But now what I'm gonna do here is just move both of these sides in a little bit. And this just kind of keeps everything a, a bit neat and tidy. And I'm not too worried actually if this gets a little bit narrower because I, I think I do want to make this a little bit narrower anyway. So we're going to jump in and bring it to about there. And so the trick with a Z is we actually move the top point in a little bit more that way. And I'm actually... Maybe not by much, but I'm gonna nudge it over ever so slightly because w when we get there, we'll, we'll talk about this more detail, but similar to the S, uh, you can't really have a, 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 a shape like this here where the top and the bottom are the same shape. Technically, yes, it'll, you know, it would be technically you'd have the square and whatnot, but when you really zoom out and take a look at this from far away, it's gonna look a little bit lopsided because our eye is giving more weight to the uh, the top part than the bottom <clears throat> so to compensate for that we want to make the top of the letter a little bit narrower than the bottom of the letter and I know it sounds weird but visually it it, it evens out so one thing I'm going to just see here and I'm typing out gibberish is I want to see how this is stacking up. Now this doesn't look too bad, but the Z definitely does look a little bit thicker to me. And so this is where we get into a kind of an optical illusion kind of thing. Because I want this to look about the same width, but it's difficult, you know? It's So this is just kind of a balancing act that I'm creating, trying to figure out where our happy balance is going to be. But I think for now that's going to be okay. Yeah. And it doesn't look too terrible either, even comparing it to that H. But yeah, so the reason that I think we're probably good here is, especially with the curve in this eye, I think that works a little bit. I may end up coming in and, and tapering this out a little bit. Uh, similar to what I was talking about with the shoulder of the H, we do get that back black space here, or that heavy space. But you got this big old chunk of, of stuff going on there that we tapered out on the H. So I think I'm just going to have to go in and just figure out how I'm going to deal with that. And I may need to take some time to figure out how exactly we're going to make that work. It, it may just be a... a a way of, of tapering that in. Um, but I think for now that's probably a good place to to put a pause on this one. Um, we did get a few letters done though, which is really cool. And you, you're really starting to see now how this is shaping up and how we can kind of quickly progress through the alphabet. So 
So hopefully you enjoyed this episode and you learned a few things. And as always, if you enjoyed this episode, I'd appreciate it if you hit that like button and the subscribe button. If you have any comments or suggestions or things that I missed and didn't realize it, uh, by all means, feel free to leave a comment. As much as I'm here to teach people about type design and getting into type design, I'm here to learn myself as well. So I'm all about sharing the knowledge and, and helping everyone become better at their craft. And as always, thanks for watching, and I will catch you in the next episode.